Uh, I am the managing director for the County of Maui. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and I did have somebody ask me uh, yesterday, <clears throat> wow, you guys brought a lot of people from Maui over here. And uh, what I did share with them is, you know, the last time that I came to California on my own, I'm not sure how many of you have been in meetings before, uh, and there's a lot of jobs and responsibilities that have to be given out, and the person not in the room gets assigned to them. Uh, the last time I came to California uh, by myself, I became the head of recovery operations for the largest and most complex wildfire disaster potentially in uh, US history. So I made sure to bring the entire team with me so we're all in the same room and I can keep an eye on them. <clears throat> uh, but really kidding aside, you know, Mayor uh, mentions this all the time, that this truly will be some of the most important professional work that we will ever do uh, in our lifetime. And I believe that's true for us and I believe that's true for all of you here today. And we're just so honored that our community has entrusted us with the opportunity to uh, help them recover throughout this process. Uh, you know, it's so fitting for this segment of the conference, we're gonna talk about mutual aid and, and best practices in working together. But truly Maui wouldn't be where we are today if uh, those who had come before us really hadn't reached out and provided assistance. And we're really standing on the shoulders of giants who have come before us. So for that, we're truly deep, uh, deeply thankful and appreciative uh, for everything. And I'll try to briefly cover some things that uh, where we were and how far we've come based on assistance of others. But I'm unfortunately not gonna be able to cover everything uh, that has happened in Maui and all the good work from many organizations uh, like Lahaina Strong, like uh, Good360, like GEM and others, CNHA and others, uh, HCF, uh, many other organizations that uh, have done so much and there's just not enough time to cover everything, but we do express our appreciation uh, and, and uh, respect to all of the organizations that have stood up over time to assist us. So on August 8th, 2023, Maui faced three major fires at once, endangering Kihei, causing severe damage in Kula, and devastating Lahaina. We had multiple evacuations occurring simultaneously throughout the uh, different parts of the island, including of our own emergency shelters in Lahaina and Kihei, uh, that were threatened by additional fires that day. These wildfires scorched roughly 6,600 acres, impacted about 2,200 structures, and displaced around 12,000 people. Uh, Mayor did mention this in uh, opening remarks to the conference. Uh, 102 lives were lost that day, and we still have two individuals missing. And as much really as Maui has grown over the years, and it has grown a lot, uh, we're still such a close-knit island community, and so we all lost family, friends, uh, loved ones, and coworkers that day. Uh, teams from across the nation came to assist <clears throat> in search and rescue and recovery efforts, including canine uh, and recovery units. Law enforcement agencies assisted with identification and managed the list of missing individuals, which exceeded 3,000 in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. Hazardous material work was completed in December 2023, clearing 1,374 residential and 74 commercial properties. 13 shipping containers of hazardous materials were then transported off of Maui for safe disposal, which also included one of the largest solar and electric vehicle battery removal and decommissioning efforts in the nation. Upon completion of these phase one operations, the county shifted its focus to implementing a phased reentry program to allow residents to safely return to their homes and property for the first time following the devastating wildfire. We had tremendous amount of help from Cal OES, Cal Fire, California Highway Patrol, and many others. Uh, one in the detailed uh, planning of the effort, completing over 2,600 structural safety assessments to facilitate secure reentry. Uh, as well as assistance in our EOC and planning uh, and standing up the reentry program. We issued over 5,600 passes to grant residents access to properties within the restricted disaster area, and many organizations, wonderful organizations from across our county and the nation, uh, volunteered for sifting, mental health support, childcare, refreshments, and the like to assist our families in their reentry process. Uh, in the immediate response to the wildfires, congregate shelters were established, donation food, counseling, and family assistance centers were stood up, 
and even moving thousands of tourists from West Maui in their rental cars. During this period, the community really united and mobilized and transported truckloads of food and critical supplies to West Maui by sea and air. Reestablishing critical lifelines such as uh, fuel stations became urgent and the county launched fuel distribution and relief efforts until those community lifelines were restored a few days later. The day after August 8th, the first food distribution center was established and soon led to a statewide effort for food and supply distributions and the creation of multiple di distribution hubs throughout Maui, both government and community run, and there are still community food and supply distribution hubs in Maui operating today more than a year later. Amid the influx of resources, the Kako'o Resource Center was established to help survivors navigate relief resources. We had uh, our community also included our state and uh, local legislative leaders uh, who helped provide a lot of assistance in providing community feedback, uh, resources, funding, uh, and other items that were needed during that time. As a result of the disaster, thousands of residents were left without housing and the Red Cross and the county immediately established congregate shelters and soon FEMA, the Red Cross and others helped to stand up a non-congregate sheltering program accommodating up to 8,000 survivors who could not return to their homes. Uh, the Office of Recovery was established to address both intermediate and long-term disaster recovery needs. In, collab in collaboration with Office of Recovery, Mayor Bisson formed an advisory team comprising of Lahaina residents, and pictured here is the original group, which has uh, grown and changed over time. This team works to ensure that the community's needs and desires are integral to the county's discussions and decisions. To facilitate public communication, MauiRecovers.org was launched as a comprehensive online resource and really as a shout out to a lot of the communities that helped us, many of the websites, uh, documents, templates that we use throughout this process to really get ahead uh, to where we are today was provided by them uh, as assistance for us. Following the devastating wildfire in Lahaina, King Kamehameha III Elementary School was destroyed. And in response, the USACE in partnership with FEMA and the state of Hawaii undertook the design and oversight of the King Kamehameha III Temporary School. This educational facility designed to accommodate 600 students began construction at the ending of 2023 and welcomed its first students and staff in April 2024. The next major phase of the recovery effort was removing debris through the Consolidated Debris Removal Program. A com crucial component of this operation was creating a temporary disposal site or de temporary debris storage site. Designed with stringent standards, the TDS ensured the secure contain containment of any hazardous materials and construction of the TDS began in October 23 and the facility was operational and ready to accept debris by January 2024. And trust me, we could give a whole session on this, on what to do and what not to do in terms of community buy-in. And as part of, uh, I think there's a lot of talk about uh, leadership, a part of that is just acknowledging and recognizing when uh, we do fail as leaders and when things do go wrong, is being accountable for that and then demonstrating to the community how we can do better and we will do better moving forward. The county committed to conducting weekly disaster recovery community meetings to update residents on recovery progress, including debris removal efforts and to distribute informational materials. These meetings offered, also offered a chance for residents to interact directly with operations staff and county officials. Additionally, neighborhood workshops, small groups, and focus groups, and individual meetings uh, occurred throughout. And weekly meetings in Lahaina are still ongoing. And the totality of community outreach, from what we've heard from many partners, represents some of the largest community outreach ever done post-disaster. In October 2023, the county initiated the collection of rights of entry forms. As a result, 100% of eligible properties in Kula have joined the Consolidated Debris Removal Program, and 99% of eligible properties in Lahaina have also enrolled. Phase two of the debris removal operations commenced in January 2024 and is projected to conclude by January 2025. As of the first week of September, 100% of residential debris and 59% of commercial debris have been removed. 
The wildfires also resulted in substantial pressure loss and heat damage to pipes in the affected areas. Working in conjunction with the county and state, the EPA conducted sampling and testing and it isolated, helped us to isolate the water system from fire damaged structures to prevent contamination. Sampling operations began in February 2024 and by August 2024, the Department of Water Supply declared Lahaina's public water system safe to drink after sampling over 1,300 laterals and conducting various isolation efforts on the system, including cutting and capping affected lines. The fire also caused significant damage to the wastewater system, affecting essential pump stations. In March 2024, 97,749 linear feet of sewer lines in Lahaina were cleared and inspected, enabling the County of Maui to prioritize emergency repairs. And as of September 2024, approximately 60% of the affected county sewer system has been restored. The county is shooting to restore all remaining wastewater service by the end of this year. Uh, we did have Four Leaf up a little bit earlier and with support from them, as well as our folks from Santa Rosa and Sonoma counties, the county launched an expedited permitting system to assist residents in applying for disaster recovery building permits. The initial recovery permitting center opened in Kahului on April 29th and the first permit uh, for rebuilding a Lahaina residence destroyed in the August 8 wildfire was issued on May 15th. A second satellite location in Lahaina commenced operations on July 1st and as of September 6th, a total of 187 permits have been submitted with 68 already issued. You know, one of the common things we heard from all communities uh, when we talked to them about recovering from a wildfire uh, was the number one issue that your community is gonna face is housing. And that, that really proved to be the case uh, in Maui too. Um, you know, a very interesting stat that uh, Maui has that many other communities don't face is of our displaced residents, 90% uh, were renters and 10% were homeowners. And, and generally in other communities, that's kind of flipped the other way. That's really made us and uh, FEMA and other partners kind of rethink the model and programs in which we provide assistance to others. Grove Insight recently conducted a survey involving 2,097 residents of Maui County including 1,105 individuals directly affected by the fires. The survey revealed that 18% of fire impacted participants reported having an immediate family member who was left Maui, while 81% had a friend who had departed the island. Additionally, 45% of those affected by the fires have considered relocating away from Maui. And, uh, you know, I did have the opportunity to meet um, ICON last year at uh, the National Association of Counties Conference. Uh, I think one thing I really you know, took away from, from that conference last year, immediately prior to the wildfire, is the story that we heard uh, related to housing. And it was in one of the sessions, uh, you know, this uh, group from Texas kind of shared one of the things that happened to them. And in that, they held a, a public and community meeting and really to try to inspire hope into people. Um, and they talked about the American dream and how anything is possible uh, with the American dream. If you just put your hard work into it, you give a lot of work ethic, you get a good education, uh, you put your mind to it, anything is possible and all your dreams can come true. And in that meeting, a lady stood up in the back and raised her hand and they called on her. And she said, if I don't have a safe and secure place to lay my head at night, how do you expect me to dream? And the answer to that is we can't. We can't expect our community to be able to have hope and dream for the future. And we have a simple success metric uh, for our recovery operations, and that's really to keep our people at home. We want to keep our community intact. And Jennifer, I really appreciated that quote uh, about hopefulness is adversarial, lays waste to cynicism. Hopefulness is really what's gonna keep our people home but all of us, not just from Maui, but from other areas, we must remember that the basic needs, what the basic needs of our residents are and what they don't and do have. And to help them dream and hope again, we have to find ways to help them meet that. So, uh, you know, for, regarding the resilience of the community, um, I would put up Lahaina and our Lahaina residents uh, against really any other community in the entire world. No other community is more resilient than Lahaina. 
We have a saying in Hawaii, and it's used around the world, that is Maui no ko'oi, essentially meaning Maui is the best. But what makes Maui the best, and objectively, it is the best, by the way, I'm sorry to every, everywhere else, but what makes it the best is our people. Our greatest asset is our people. That's why we'll measure success by being able to keep our people at home. And we will rebuild and recover with and for our people. No one else. We aren't rebuilding Lahaina for anyone else, but for the people who made it so special. You know, recently, my son has been asking me about a lot of the wars that are happening uh, around the country, uh, like between Russia and Ukraine, and even wars of old, uh, like Vietnam. And one of his main questions to me is, why can't these larger countries with more resources, more military personnel, more equipment, why can't they beat these smaller countries with less resources, less equipment, more easily? Like, why is it taking so long? Or why does all this stuff keep happening? And I told him that, you know, there's likely a variety of reasons that impact this. But primarily, to me, it is because there's no greater power no greater strength and no greater drive to persevere than when you're fighting for your family and you're fighting for your home, even in the face of insurmountable odds. So in closing, I say this to all of our Hawaii Ohana and many of you I would include in that uh, for all the assistance uh, and resources you've helped us to provide. But I really know, I truly know that we will be successful even when success appears to be out of reach. I know that we will continue to fight and persevere even in the face of insurmountable odds. And I know that each and every one of us will never give in and never give up in this effort because we are fighting for our home. We are fighting for our local families. And I hope that we always remember that in everything that we do. So thank you for giving me the time to share with you all today. We're looking forward to the discussion ahead about mutual aid and best practices. And I'm happy to uh, join this wonderful panel here today. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Josiah, and I think um, the way you closed is very uh, meaningful and, and, and really encompasses everything that we all have felt about your community. Um, so I'm nice to see everyone again. We'll get you through this, and then you get lunch. Um, I am honored to sit on the panel. Um, From Ashes to Allies, local government leaders discuss mutual aid and best practices post-mega fires. So I'd like to start by introducing our panel, um, Scott Westro is the fire chief for the city of Santa Rosa. He began his fire service in San Luis Obispo County, first with the Pismo Beach Fire Department and then with San Luis Obispo County. He came to Santa Rosa in 2000 and has held the ranks of firefighter, paramedic, captain training, captain, training captain, battalion chief, and deputy fire chief. He became the interim fire chief in 2020 and fire chief in 2021. He holds a bachelor's degree in emergency services management and is a state of California certified chief officer. He sits on the board for REDCOM, is the vice president of the Sonoma County Fire Chiefs Association, represents all of the cities on the Sonoma County Fire Service Working Group, is the area director for the California Fire Chiefs Association, and serves as Sonoma County's operational area coordinator. So he's pretty busy. Uh, Paul Lowenthal in the middle is the Division Chief Fire Marshal for the City of Santa Rosa. He's been involved in fire and disaster recovery since 2017 when he first led the Debris Task Force for the City of Santa Rosa following the Tubbs Fire and Nuns Fires. In 2020, Paul played a key role in coordinating recovery after the Glass Fire. More recently, Paul has been assisting with recovery in Maui County, He's a board member for the Fire Safe Sonoma, the Fire Safe Council for Sonoma County. He managed the development of the Santa Rosa Vegetation Management Program and of the Vegetation Management Ordinance. He also has helped develop the city's community wildfire protection plan. And thank you, Paul, for the help that you've been providing to our friends in Maui. John Smith is the Public Works Highways Division Chief for Maui County. He is a seasoned engineering professional with over 22 years of experience in infrastructure design, construction, and maintenance. He manages all operations and provides oversight for personnel and program budgets regarding county roadway systems. John now serves as the co-lead for the Office of Recovery, Infrastructure Recovery, 
support function and leads all fire debris removal efforts while restoring critical services such as clean drinking water, sanitary sewer, and electricity. John holds a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering from Ohio University and is a registered professional engineer. I introduced myself earlier. Again, if you weren't in the room, Reba Feldman. I'm a retired city manager from the city of Malibu. Um, and I shared a little bit about my story, but I wanted to uh, give you a, a quick uh, rundown. So I always thought I was prepared for a disaster. I had been through many disasters, starting with um, my family losing a home in the 1993 Topanga Malibu fire um, and had been through many other um, FEMA disasters. And so we trained and practiced. Malibu seems to have a proclivity for a lot of disasters. So it was something we thought uh, we were ready for as a small city. Um, I had done things like test my reverse 911 system. We had enrolled to be able to issue our own WIAs, something most cities don't do. Um, and then the Woolsey fire hit, and I realized I wasn't ready. So on Monday of the week of the fire, um, my day started with my sheriff captain having a stroke at work. He had a new number two. It was her first day on the job, and the first time I met her was via that phone call. On Tuesday, we had a statewide election and a local election. I had two city council members who were termed out, two new elected who had not yet been sworn in. We had a LA County Sheriff's race with a race that was too close to call for several weeks and a new governor who was elected but not yet sworn in. On Wednesday, our community was impacted by a mass shooting event called the Borderline Grill Shooting. Um, 24 people lost their lives, including a Pepperdine University student. Pepperdine is in Malibu. So my day on Thursday morning started with um, handling that and addressing that. Then later that day, we had the campfire breakout in Paradise, the Hill Fire breakout in the Thousand Oaks area, and at 3 o'clock, the Woolsey Fire broke out in um, the hills uh, north of Ma uh, Malibu. Um, at the time that it started, it was about 30 miles away from Malibu, um, but we were undergoing um, our high wind events, the Santa Ana winds, with winds um, peaking up 60 and 70 miles an hour. My home is in between where the fire started and where Malibu is, and so I evacuated at midnight. Um, my Of my five council members, my fire captain, my mayor was a fire captain and he was on duty. My mayor pro tem decided to stay and protect his home, ended up in ICU almost going blind. And my third uh, remaining council member had a mental breakdown and we had to actually have him committed uh, shortly after the fire. Um, because the fire was so large, people could not get in to assist me. My staff, I had a staff of 100, and so we were really short um, staffed. We had the flu go through our EOC, um, and it was the holidays, and so I had people out of town. And so I tell you this story because even when you think you're ready, you're not. And without mutual aid, I'm just going to bring it back to that, um, I wouldn't have survived um, the aftermath of the fire. The people who came to help me, my um, colleagues, my fellow city managers, people from Santa Rosa, people from all over the West Coast came to help in our recovery. And so it's a really important part of what we do. I believe in paying it forward. I do that every day. Even right now, I've been on the phone um, helping those cities that are on fire right now. And I know everybody sitting with me uh, believes that as well. So that's the conversation we're going to have today of why mutual aid is so important and how we can get it right. Um, and I know Josiah has stories about people knocking on his door and you're like, what do you want? I, I don't need you. And how do you figure out who you do need? So I'm going to turn it over to my panelists and let them get started. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Paul. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Um, and we're taking the mutual aid a little bit further uh, and incorporated it into today. Um, in my 25 years of uh, providing mutual aid around the state, uh, typically for wildfires, uh, and since 2017, uh, virtually and in person uh, around the state and around the Western United States for post-wildfire recovery. Um, the, this has been by far the most unique uh, mutual aid I've ever experienced, and it became uh, less about work um, and more of a, a personal uh, relationship. Um, and to keep the mutual aid going, uh, we talked about having some slides, not to bore you before lunch, uh, but to give us something to talk about and highlight. Um, and 
during my sixth trip to Maui uh, last week, John uh, admitted that he was not very prepared. So I threw, whoops, I threw his name. Oh, it didn't happen. So there was an updated slide. Still not prepared. Still not prepared. There was an updated slide uh, that said, uh, and uh, John Smith, uh, the highway's chief. Um, wow, this thing wants to keep moving. Um, but this was my home away from home uh, and still is my home away from home. There's a lot of people that think that my mutual aid assignment uh, is all about the ocean and the beach. Uh, it has been spent at John's base yard uh, with the chickens um, and John uh, and his team from Maui. Um, most people know uh, a lot about uh, how EOCs operate, how a joint incident command operates and the different task forces based on our experiences here in California. Uh, in 2017, we were the home to the most disastrous wildfire at the time, and that's one of those titles that you don't want, but at the same time, you don't want to lose it because that means that somebody else has gone through something worse than you. Um, we use various forms of these communications. We understand when we're helping around the state how things work, and somebody from Ventura can ask me how they handled something on the debris task force or through the housing task force, and we know who to connect them with. Um, but when we uh, received the call from FEMA, uh, and the reason we received the call from FEMA was literally, I think it was a couple months before the, um, the Maui fires, uh, federal administrator uh, Bob Fenton actually reached out to us uh, based on our experiences with all of our fires in Santa Rosa and Sonoma County um, and said that he wanted to bring a team of leaders uh, from across the country to talk about our lessons learned. Uh, I was very honest. Um, I told him that we had a lot of struggles uh, in with our experiences at the federal level, um, almost too honest. Uh, but from that, uh, I didn't burn the relationship. It actually, I think it improved it. Um, and I got a phone call from him uh, saying, hey, clearly you know what's going on in Maui. I think we have a really unique opportunity to connect Santa Rosa with Maui. A lot of the struggles that you guys went through that you had to learn on your own um, we see some very uh, unique opportunities to implant and embed a Santa Rosa team with Maui County. Um, so Santa Rosa on the left, Maui on the right. Um, I was tasked with my first recovery assignment was tasked with uh, building a debris task force, which no one, oh man, this thing really does fly. What is it doing? I'm hitting back, I promise. So we'll just let it cycle. Um, so I sat in the back of a community room, uh, put together a debris task force on my own, and there was somebody that used the analogy of uh, uh, building the plane while you fly it. We truly did build the plane while we flew it because we didn't really have anybody to lean on back then. We had tons of support in the EOC, uh, but we lacked the support uh, for the actual task force, the stuff that was taking place before recovery could actually start. Um, I'll just jump in, Paul. While well, I'm trying to stop this. Yeah. So, and what was different in Maui that kind of shocked everybody else was we didn't even know what a debris task force was. We didn't know what mutual aid was. So we had all these things in that, that picture that he had with, you know, building a plane while we fly it. That very much was true. So we he just took some snapshots from our our situation room of where we were building org charts and building out how are we going to do this thing while we were doing it and i can say um 100 with <laughs> with authority we we couldn't have done it without this man right here although i will say this is a little bit different man than i knew before i don't know what's on his face um he didn't have that before but um no just joking paul i got permission to joke about that before um but it was it, the relationship that we built, and it really did become a relation, you know, a personal relationship. We're buddies now. Um, that that trust with someone that had gone through it and built it before was so necessary. And I'm sure we can talk more about it um, in a little while. And I don't want to take up all of our time, but I, that that's really what we're getting at here. Is just when when you're going through this as a new community going through this. You don't know who to trust. You, you really don't. And you're, you're figuring it out. You know who you know, but as literally probably thousands of people showed up, and I'm sure Josiah can attest to this, they just show up at your office 
And I'm like, well, who's this guy? Or who's this? I, I don't know who this person is. But we started to find people that had been through it before and in a similar setting and a similar um, feel. And it was almost like within the first minute of the conversation, like, okay, he gets it. And then, and then you start the, the process. I'll, I'll stop there. One of the first things we tried to do was help organize um, John uh, based on what we did, in, obviously, in Santa Rosa and what a lot of other people. And what you saw is a lot of the, the snapshots of, of how I organized and how I wanted to help John organize. But John hit on one thing, and through the mutual aid system, again, we're so used to it. We're so used to our California playbook and how we help one another. That playbook didn't exist, um, and it really wasn't, uh, it wasn't fair to come over and try and force it upon them. So we had to figure out how to make what works in California work for Maui. Um, that was the, the biggest take home. And having the understanding that uh, there truly is a, a Hawaiian standard time, understanding that um, the way that we do things in California can't just be put upon a community that isn't, um, isn't prepared for it. There's, um, there's just a lot that has to be done to really make sure that you're meeting the needs of the community um, and taking uh, a lot of their feedback and, 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 uh, and just changing the model, changing the mode, and, and making it work. And if we could turn to John and the, I'm sorry, sorry, to Scott, and if you could uh, share a few uh, thoughts on your experience with Mutual Aid. Uh, thanks, Reva, and everybody, Scott Westrope. My first note down here is don't make fun of Paul's mustache. So thanks, John, for uh, taking care of that for me. Um, my, my role within the organization has been much more operationally focused, and so um, I want to hit on some of the same topics, but it, more of a response in organizational recovery level. Um, and, and the one thing that I really want to lean into is um, relationships. And while we thought our relationships were good, and they were, um, they can always be better. And I think that's a common theme you're going to hear um, throughout this today. So the relationships we have within our department, um, within the city infrastructure and the city structure, um, city of Santa Rosa has 1,300 employees. And everybody's affected in one way or involved in one way or another from um, mechanics and bus drivers all the way up to um, the elected officials. Um, your cohort, whatever your cohort is, is what is your relationship with your cohort? Are they a phone call away? Um, your adjacent, adjacent jurisdictions, sorry, I've been battling bronchitis for two and a half months, and so I'm not emotional, it's just my voice. Um, um, it's okay and, if you are. This is a great Yeah, thing. yeah. It's a safe space. Um, and then the community. And and our, our relationship with our community is very unique at this point, um, but it's involving them and looking at your community organizations, whether they're NGOs, NPOs, faith-based faith -based organizations, because everybody will be involved at some point and at some level, or they will want to be involved at some point or at some level. Um, so the reason I kind of went deep in that list is, is for that point exactly, but real quick on mutual aid in the community. So California Master Mutual Aid is the gold standard. It's been around since the 70s. It works very well. Um, Emma's catching up, law enforcement's catching up, um, but the fire system works very well. The problem is it's slow. Um, the bureaucracy is slow. So my, my plea to you is build those relationships early because when lives are threatened and, and homes are threatened and you have that imminent threat in your community, help should only be a phone call away. Um, we, we've really strengthened our relationships with our adjacent areas and I've used it several times. I was en route to a fire um, and I got a phone call from uh, my Cal Fire partner and he said, do you need help? I said, yep, and hung up the phone and he sent resources. I called him on the way to a fire one time. I said, do you, I'll clean it up. I said, do you have any airplanes on the ground? He goes, yeah, I'm like, send them on the way. That was the end of the conversation. So, and recently over the weekend, there was a pretty impactful fire or there was an impactful fire in Lake County, which is one of our adjacent counties. And we were able to send two strike teams out of Sonoma County within moments we worried about the people and we worried about the houses before we worried about how we were gonna get paid. Um, so we can figure out all the paperwork on the back end, but have those relationships and those phone numbers in your phone and in your Rolodex where you can get help coming to your community immediately. And that's not just for, for the fire service, that goes for law enforcement, county administrators, um, elected city managers, um, have those numbers in your Rolodex and those relationships built ahead of time. Real quick, quickly on the community front, um, we have the fortunate or unfortunate ability within our community 
um, that we have 180,000 people within the city of Santa Rosa or 500,000 throughout the county of Sonoma that have the little hairs on the back of their neck. So when the wind's blowing and it's dry, our community knows what to do. They've been through the exercise. Um, when we push the evacuation warning or order button, they know what to do. Um, you know, it's unfortunate they're there, but we really do have that advantage. Uh, but the way to build that early on is get them involved early, whether it's through planning or through exercises, whatever the case may be, is get your community involved early. So you're building that trust and those relationships and that, that muscle memory. So when the time comes, they have that ability. One of the things that, you know, we've worked really hard on post recovery or in the recovery process is giving the community members in those micro communities the ability to build their own resiliency. And so whether it's a medical facility or an educational facility, uh, you know, nursing homes or large, you know, large senior living facilities, we give them the resources to take care of themselves. Because, you know, in Santa Rosa, we have 180,000 people we're trying to protect over 14 square miles, but 40 square miles, sorry, get my numbers confused sometimes. Um, but we only have 10 engines and two lighter trucks on, in service on a day-to-day -day basis. So having the community be able to take care of themselves, so they, have, they exercise their evacuation plans, they have bus routes set up, all these things ahead of time. So you build that trust, you build that esprit de corps, um, it's gonna pay dividends in the end. Great, thank you so much. And so Josiah, I wanted to ask you a question because obviously this is um, still fresh for you and I know um, you shared with me that a lot of people just showed up to try and help. And so can you talk about um, some suggestions for the group listening who are helpers and who do wanna show up and help, how to do that and be effective with it um, and not be in the way? Yeah, I, I think uh, a part of that is, you know, developing relationships ahead of time. Uh, I know there, there was some talk about that. Um, but, you know, especially in Hawaii and I'm sure in other communities as well, really relationship driven. Um, and so having those pre-existing relationships actually even helped open the door for after the fire um, because we had other communities actually that I had just met at NACO uh, about a month before as well as... Um, uh, some of our congressional membership um, helped provide those recommendations that, that opened up the opportunity for us to uh, welcome them in. Uh, and it's been such a beneficial partnership, but you know, without that kind of support and pre-existing relationships, it uh, would have been fairly difficult to help you know, navigate through all those processes given uh, you know, immediately after uh, on August 9th, like the, the wildfires haven't even been 24 hours old and we already had international media. We had people sneaking into the ELC. We had um, consultants from all over the world um, right at the front doorsteps, um, you know, disaster chasers and whatnot, and trying to weed through like who's legit and who's actually there for the right purposes was tremendously difficult. And so, you know, really helping to uh, have those pre existing relationships and identifying communities that have gone through this prior, uh, you know, really helped us to um, kind of weed through some of the, the noise, so to say. Um, I, I would just say, and not just because you're up here, Reva, but um, uh, I think there's different types of assistance that can be provided as well. So what we experienced uh, from, you know, a lot of different uh, agencies and whatnot was like offers of assistance. But what, you know, we actually needed was assistance. Um, we didn't need to get additional homework to do, paperwork to fill out, like steps and processes to work through. It's like we needed assistance in the moment. And so, you know, I really thank like Paul and Tennis and others who could just jump right in, you know. And once we develop that relationship, it's like they're a resource and an asset to us, not something that's going to create additional work uh, or burden for us. And then for Riva in particular, like there's, you know, people that uh, jumped in, in in the midst of everything that was happening. And then uh, Reva and I, actually the first time we met was in person, was at this conference. Uh, but I feel like I know her a lot because we've had a lot of dialogue and communication. Um, and I, I think there's assistance that can be provided other than also on the ground support. And I, I think I really appreciated um, that there wasn't any pushiness and uh, it just was like overall care for myself as an individual, 
uh, checking in every so often and whatnot. And so, so there's other assistance that you can provide rather than on the ground support. And I think that's, that's really critical and, and appreciated. It's my honor to be able to help you, but I think that's a, and thank you, a, a really good lesson is that we can all just be a lifeline. You don't actually have to be there. You can just say, I'm here if you need me. These are the things I know. These are the things I've witnessed. We all hate wind and sirens, so we're all good. Um, you know, that, that that's another way of helping in, in all of the different sectors of um, response and recovery that we all touch here in this room. So keep that in mind. You don't actually have to physically be there, but you might be able to say, this is something we did. Here it is. If you need it, if you have questions, call me. If not, I understand and let that be. Um, so I think that's a good lesson. Um, we are running out of time, so I just wanted to ask each of you if you had any closing thoughts. Uh, Josiah, if you want to start. Um, want to get everyone their sandwiches. Um, I, I think I just really want to express our appreciation as, as a community. We really wouldn't be where we're at today um, and gotten as far ahead as we have uh, without all the support being provided by so many other communities. Uh, you know, we did... Uh, hear from Paradise really early on about how, you know, we felt like we we're being a little bit of a burden to them. Uh, and they did share with us that, um, you know, helping others was really part of their own recovery process. And so I know from us in Maui, uh, you know, it's just part of our nature. We will pay it forward uh, into the future to other communities. We hope that, you know, disasters like this never happen again, but the, the you know, reality is that they will. And, um, you know, I, I think just uh, understanding that um, it really is going to take all of us, not just from our own state, not just from our own community, uh, but from uh, you know other areas across the country and and really across the world to have, have poured out their hearts and souls to us. And so, um, you know, we intend to to pay that back forward uh, into the future. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know why I have to keep talking after Josiah. Um, but my message would be very much the same is our mindset has been since October of 2017 and even in that month, it's like, we will continue to pay this forward. That's why we're still up here today. That's why Paul's been in Hawaii. We've been all over the country. Um, that's the relationship that we built with Malibu and Riva. Um, it's don't reinvent the wheel. There's lived experience out there. Um, we wanna share, we wanna make it easier. Sure, we're, we learned some lessons the hard way, um, but other communities don't have to. And so we're still dedicated to that as the fire chief, and I know my, my boss is here and she's approved it, um, is that we continue to pay it forward. We continue to help others. Um, that is our mission, that is our goal, and that's where we're gonna be. So um, one thing that I just wanna briefly touch on, I know we're over time, is the behavioral health of your team, um, however your big team is, however big your team is, um, I could spend a whole hour talking about that, but um, set those set those mechanisms up ahead of time, and that's something we'd be willing to help with, so you can reach out to us. But the behavioral health of not only your organization, however big that is, but the community um, is vital and something we're still seeing effects of. Um, and so we can talk more about that offline if you'd like. But Scott hit on two points. Uh, the mutual aid can come in multiple forms. It can be literally not reinventing the wheel or lessons learned. And that was really what we were trying to highlight um, was that it could be as simple as giving like our Sonoma County Recovers, which was a joint website between Santa Rosa and the county that we literally came over and gave Maui County a copy of. We did it to paradise. So like a lot of these tools are, are in place. Um, or it could be the lessons learned. And that's what I think helped John the most is a lot of things that went wrong in the city or right, we were able to help tell them about, whether it was the, the telling them that you're gonna have a commercial vehicle issue with all your dump trucks, you're gonna have your storm drains are gonna turn into little sinkholes. Um, you're gonna have to have a place that you're gonna need to put all your burned vehicles. John almost described it as basically like it's, it's a crystal ball. Um, and that's truly what the mutual aid felt like for him was a crystal ball and to be able to forecast the future and know that there was resources and tools to help him get through every step of the way. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's, I couldn't think of a better term than crystal ball, but it is as close to seeing into the future as you can get, having someone at the right level that's done the same thing that you've done, um, 
you know, not that far removed from it, really. And so we're still looking, we're still leaning in. And I echo what Josiah said, is we, we look forward to the day when Maui can pay it forward and pay it back. We're still in it, but I'm sure we'll get there. So thank you, guys. Thank you all for, for what you shared, and thank you for helping each other. Thank you for helping me when I needed it. The thing I learned from Santa Rosa is debris removal um, is a bad word or bad words, and it sure is. Um, so that was my big takeaway. Um, but I wanted to thank all of you for your years of service and helping of, of yourselves and your community and each other. Um, and now it is lunchtime. There is um, lunch in the back for everybody, and we will be back here uh, to start at 1.15. So look forward to seeing you. Thank you.